Hey guys, what's up? By Sack the Tron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a new series I'm calling Low Nines and Eights. Not a very creative title, but it's Low Town Hall Nines and Town Hall Eights, mainly coming from One Hive Trinity. So a big shout out to them. They are becoming a pretty regular clan, just like Alpha and Genesis. They have their own uh, exclusive members, and they're participating. Don't know why I mixed two words there. They're participating in some high-level wars, um, and it's pretty fun to watch some of these. It's kind of reminiscent of when I was a eight and a low nine. So. Um, this series is going to be devoted to watching their attacks and talking about the the art of attacking when you have low level heroes at Town Hall 9 and as a Town Hall 8. This is a very highly requested series. Um, some of you guys might not be a big fan of it, but it, will, it won't be that often I do it. Just kind of maybe once a week, once every two weeks, check in, show some awesome attacks from them that hopefully can help you guys. So let me know what you think of this series in the comments below. Let's get started here uh, looking at base number two. Uh, t we're going to look at two different wars, some attacks from both. Um, this first one is a probably a pretty common base that is seen in just random wars. It's this um, Tesla in the core base and it, yeah, I've seen this base. I remember seeing it when I was attacking at Town Hall 9, so it must be an old base. Um, the heroes are both on one side, so obviously on a hog attack come at the base from this side. Would have liked to see a few test wall breakers, but um, luckily it doesn't cost him here. This is, uh, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that's not some kind of satire on me. <laughs> um, okay, anyway, the uh, the troops, I actually didn't even see that when I was looking at the attacks the first time. This, <laughs> it's not some kind of cheesy joke. I honestly just saw that, his name there. So anyway, uh, comes through the base. I like how he used a few wizards to back up the queen just to help deal with the CC troops. It was a hound, but it could have been a dragon. It could have been something else. That way, um, the hound goes down quicker and the queen's ability is not wasted on it. She's able to grab about two or three defenses with her ability, especially a bomb tower, which is pretty important before she goes down. So whenever you have low-level heroes, and even if you don't have low-level heroes in some situations, drop a few wizards in behind your kill squad. Let them do work along with your queen. They're great for taking out CC troops, and if it is just like, you know, some kind of ground CC that the wizards aren't needed for, they still will help with it, and they'll also just damage other buildings. So one thing for Town Hall 9 that I've talked about in the past, when you have low-level heroes, you want to bring extra DPS in your kill squad. So he brought bowlers and he brought wizards to add some DPS so the golems weren't just tanking for the heroes, which don't put out that much damage themselves, being level 10. So, okay, uh, let's uh, fast forward here. Nice attack, and we'll move on to the next one. Uh, from the other war, we're going to look at two Town Hall 9 attacks today and three Town Hall 8 attacks, and then we'll wrap it up. So the hogs finish up. Um, still, you know, a few things that could have been improved. Um, cleanup especially. I uh, could have had a few archers or something for some corner huts, but gets it done with enough time. Now we're going to um, go ahead and go into a war that's going on with five hours left, both clans having almost half their attacks, about a third of their attacks left. But it's already over because both clans tied 45-45. Uh, so it shows um, when you don't have any Town Hall 10s in some of these wars, they can end up like this very quickly. But a great hit rate for both clans here, uh, One Hive Trinity and Superstar. We're taking a look at base number one. This is Jake and a very nice uh, kind of mass La Luna attack here. Just taking what's there. The queen's just standing right on the outside. Close. She's like inside that wall. If she was... Actually, behind the wall, it might have been a fail. Um, hopefully, his queen would have gotten her. But he trades the king for the queen. I'm not sure about how he used his queen. Um, she just kind of sits back and takes out some trash buildings. I would have liked to see her used for maybe cleanup. Because if I can pause for a moment, just so I don't have to talk too fast. She's obviously not going to get this air defense being level 13. 
The air defense is also set back, so she'd have to step up by this wizard tower to get it. Um, with the storage and all this point defense, it's not going to happen. So I would like to see the same king trade, but maybe drop the queen for cleanup, and she can take out an extra de uh, defense or two if the loons don't quite get everything. Especially with these back-end wizard towers, um, it's possible that the queen could be the hero. So I would like to see her used in conjunction with the Lalo, kind of maybe drop to the side here once the archer tower is being tanked, let her um, take out uh, some more trash buildings and stay alive longer. She goes down really early, which does happen. Now, an unlucky dragon in the CC makes it very difficult, but the two poisons combined with the pups will take out that dragon, and there is a bunch of air skellies, so the loons start dropping really fast here, but the deployment was good. The spell placement was good. I like the heals. Um, or I think one heal. The rage was good. I think he dropped the rage over the core Teslas, which is how you want to do it. Just the back end, because there were so many things that are anti lalo being the dragon, in, being the air skellies, all that stuff made it pretty tricky. So only has this lava hound when it push comes to shove here, but that's pretty much all he needs because uh, there's not really any defenses left besides the wizard tower. And that lava hound will just sit there and tank while one lava pup helps take out the wizard tower. So a little bit close at the end here, had some cleanup minions, which is important because this hound is not going to pop. And we will fast forward to the end. Nice attack by Jake. This is one strategy you can do, especially if you can trade for that queen. Um, it's a very good strategy. And oftentimes people put a lava hound in the CC and they put those skellies on ground, which makes it even easier. So some Town Hall 8 action. Let's move on here. My voice is a little bit croaky this morning, but <clears throat> oh well. Um, back to the previous war. We're going to look at one. Uh, number 8. Go down here. Cookies and cream. The attack by Don Wampone, I think. Um, this is a pretty common base. It's a kind of a core double giant bomb base. And you can see that really the only place in the core for the DGB is going to be between an air defense and most likely a Tesla that's over by this air defense. So just keeping that in mind, Don is attacking this base, goes ahead and just drops down the golem and decides, I would have, if it was me, I would have lured the CC. You'll see other attacks that lure it out and kill it in the corner. I always like doing that, but he goes ahead and says, all right, I'll let the golem tank. I'll just drop the wizards behind. A little bit riskier, but it can work out and it does. Uh, the dragon and the loon go down. In comes the king, but mainly just trying to get the defensive king taken out. And these wizards are going to step up and help disable the double giant bomb set in just a moment. But I like the hog deployment also. Not a one finger drop. You almost never want to do that. Town Hall 8 comes at it. So he triggers the giant bombs one at a time by coming in, not from where he entered with his kill squad, which might have made him cut across the double giant bomb set and kill all the hogs. But coming in from down here, which allows it to be triggered one at a time, and the kill squad helps with that by clearing out that part of the base, which is where the hogs would have gone and would have led into the double giant bomb set. So now um, goes ahead and just heals these hogs up and has one more heal that he probably doesn't even need to drop. The king and the wizards got great value getting all the way over to that kind of wizard tower area before the wizard goes down and the king is actually not going to go down very low but stays up the entire attack. Plenty of hogs for cleanup, had the CC hogs which are always extremely powerful at Town Hall 8. Fast forward to the end here, nice attack to Don Wimpone and we'll look at two from the current war that is I, almost a previous war, it's pretty much over. Gonna be a tie, which is much more common than you see in clans like One Hive Genesis, where there's a higher level town halls. But um, let's go to what bases we have. Four and six. We'll start with four. This is Spear. Okay, this clan ran the same base on like half of their town hall eights. I think more than half, almost. It, it's not even that good of a base. It has like three layers of walls surrounding the town hall there. Then some, you know, actually some decent double giant bomb spots, to be fair. Um, three of them on uh, those that you can see between the air defenses, basically. Um, but here's the CC lure that I like doing. Uh, you lure out the CC, you use one poison, archers to tank and wizards just overwhelm the dragon and it goes down along with, I think there was a loon in there as well. So that's how you want to do it. Just pull it out. Typically it's 
very easy to pull the CC at Town Hall 8. Sometimes you might have to use a few suicide hogs, but it's all worth it, especially if you can trigger a double giant bomb set or even a single bomb in the process with those suicide hogs. People have even used heal spells, invested that much into getting the CC lure and uh, eliminating a potential double giant bomb spot. So the hog deployment on this one was pretty good. Um, the blueprint was probably already there. I doubt this is the first time this base was attacked uh, because it had so many uh, uses in this war. So uh, just kind of coming at each double giant bomb set from both sides, at least the first one especially. Now um, for the last one here, he has two groups of hogs. So kind of, yeah, basically comes at it from different sides, every double giant bomb set. You never want to have more than like a third to even half of your hogs going at a double giant bomb set at one time, especially the your own hogs. The level uh, seven hogs are able to to take a double giant bomb set over heal and not die. So keep that in mind. You can send your um, max CC hogs at a double giant bomb set, and as long as you heal them, they'll be fine. So that's one thing you can use if you're trying to. Uh, clear out defenses by a possible DGB and you're afraid it's going to kill your hogs, send in the max hogs there at the best double giant bomb uh, possibility location. So this was a nice attack by Spear. Um, this base was not the best base. Don't recommend using it even though Superstar used it countless times. It was crazy how much they used it. Okay, number six here. Got to end on my favorite attack I've seen in Trinity in this visit on my Bisectatron Jr. account. Uh, which is a rushed Town Hall 9. Actually, not rushed. I mean, it was a max Town Hall 8. Now it's just a Town Hall 9 that has nothing upgraded. So like an 8.1, I guess you can call it. Um, so this is the Revenant. Seems like I've seen this name a lot in the One Hive uh, feeder clans. I don't, I don't know. Seems familiar. This one is a Surgical Quake. So drops... Uh, he has four Quakes, I think. Yeah, four Quakes. Goes ahead and drops three of them on one side and one on the other. So the overlapping area is what gets all four quake spells on it. And that the only overlap is right on that wall tile. So basically surgically opens up one, or actually two walls, which is what he wants to do. He doesn't want them to go in this compartment. He doesn't want his kill squad in this compartment. He wants to direct them right into the core here to take out those air defenses because if those core air defenses go down, uh, loons around the outside of the base can finish it off so very nice now keep in mind when you bring the three quakes and the one the CC no poison spell so have to bring a ton of wizards uh, to back up the kill squad in case it's a dragon and even like a witch can be a huge issue if you don't have a poison spell so here come the troops a few more wizards behind has like five going in then come the Valks and the CC Valks. I like how he delayed them to let the Golem uh, step out in front and tank that Dragon Loon and also let the Wizard start working on the CC. Now, unfortunately, a, one of these swings opens up a, a wall, so the Valks actually kind of go off to the side here. At least some of them do. A lot of his own Valks, I think, went into the core. But has the King with the ability, has the Wizards, the Golemites still out front, and easily gets those air defenses. A little bit late on the Loons because... You have to figure a few things. Let me pause for a moment um, to give my opinion on this. Um, not the most common attack, but when you do it, you want to make sure it's an airtight attack. Now, you want to typically drop in the loons before the air defenses go down for a few reasons. First of all, the loons are not great cleanup troops. Having them up at the end of the attack isn't that big of a deal. You'd rather have your kill squad, such as Valks, the King, Wizards. They're much better cleanup troops. So loons aren't going to do a whole lot for cleanup for you. Um, also, the loons typically will take a while before they're actually in range of the air defenses when you have them all in the core. So I think even some of these outlying defenses, this Archer Tower, right? Why am I touching the loon? I didn't even know you could do that. You can touch troops, apparently. Um, this Archer Tower, this cannon those types of defenses aren't going to be in range of the air defenses so even at the first targeting point your your loons are still going to be fine so you want to drop them so the air defenses go down right as the loons get in range 
The way they were dropped in this attack, they were dropped once the air defenses went down, but that's not the same thing. The loons still have a good five, six, seven seconds before they get in range of the air defenses after they're dropped. So the benefit of dropping them earlier is they protect your kill squad. They're taking out these point defense, these splash damage defenses that would otherwise be killing the kill squad. So the kill squad is completely dead right here, which is typically not how you want to end one of these attacks. But luckily, he has a few Valks on the outside working and brought some cleanup troops, which is always important. Um, goes ahead and wall breaks in there, which I thought was funny. A few extra wall breakers to get to that gold storage. But um, a few extra cleanup troops make it doable. Just in my opinion, you want to drop those loons much earlier. And even if you lose a few loons, even if you're a tad bit early, the air defenses start to shoot at them. You're still going to get great value. There's still too many loons for the air defenses to handle and the kill squad will take them out much quicker and even if all the loons die the kill squad will be so much more healthy because the defenses went down that much quicker so drop those loons early time them so they get in range of air defenses right as the air defenses are going down um my opinion there so nice attack to the revenant that's going to do it for this video hope you liked it i'll try to make a cool thumbnail for the for this series um but it's going to be low or uh, low nines and eights basically is the name and yeah, hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll try to do this series maybe once every other week would be a good schedule for me. Uh, good luck to One Hive Trinity in their future wars. Great clan, a fun clan to be in if you like the lower level wars, but you still want to be competitive. Uh, we're setting up a base caller system, uh, just like we have for One Hive Alpha and One Hive Genesis. So it's being incorporated as just a main One Hive clan, not necessarily just a feeder clan, but also has some good core members in it. So check it out if you're a low nine or an eight, or if you're not, you can apply to the main One Hive Genesis, One Hive Alpha family. That, that'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.